Mainline Protestants like us Presbyterians have largely forgotten what priests are. That's because we don't have priests. We have pastors. But in fact, we do have a priest, just one. And that priest, of course, is Jesus Christ. Hello, I'm Stuart Baskin, pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Tyler, Texas. And this is your daily devotional for Monday, January 15th, 2024. We're continuing with our read through the letter to the Hebrews, the current epistle reading from the Daily Lectionary. So far, we've heard the writer cajole his audience to hold fast to the faith in spite of the fact that they were weary. They were weary because, unlike for us, practicing the Christian faith for them was really demanding. It demanded being profoundly countercultural enduring social ostracization and broken relationships. The writer has used the model of Jesus Christ to encourage them by the example of his suffering and his endurance. He came down from heaven, became lower than angels, experienced all the suffering of human life, and then returned to God to present that suffering before God. Now the writer extends that narrative using the imagery of Christ as high priest. He says, Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So this really does open up the question, what is a priest? Remember, we Protestants don't have priests because we recognize Jesus Christ alone as our priest. But since we don't use the office of priest in our daily lives of faith, we've largely forgotten the significance of calling Jesus our great high priest. So without going too far in the weeds, here's what a priest is. First of all, a priest makes intercession on behalf of a congregation. The role of the priest is to represent the congregation before God. In the ancient world, this involved making sacrifices on the altar. People would bring their offerings, a calf perhaps, or a goat, and the priest would take that offering and sacrifice it on the altar on the person's behalf. Because they were specially trained and set apart for this purpose, they could represent the people before God. By the same token, They represented God before the congregation. One of the things we've largely lost these days is a full appreciation for the majesty and power of God. In our culture, we are often taught to treat God like a beloved uncle or perhaps a trusted mentor, a buddy. We treat God as an intimate friend. But we have largely forgotten about the awesome power of God who is and remains a power to to be reckoned with. Yes, God loves us, but God is also a power that could crush us with a word. One of the roles a priest had was to stand between this powerful God and the congregation, interpreting God's will and God's ways to a people who were not truly worthy to stand before God. If we have forgotten the awesome power of God, it is worth remembering Moses, who had to remove his sandals when encountering God in the burning bush. We should also remember Isaiah, who said when, in a vision of the heavenly court, and he encountered God, said, Woe is me! I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. God is an awesome power, not to be trifled with. And yet, we are invited says the writer of Hebrews, to approach the throne of grace, not with fear and trepidation, but with boldness, since our high priest is not some remote, distant, and unknowable person, but one who has experienced the fullness of human life and has taken it all to the throne of God. And instead of making trifling sacrifices, calves and goats, he himself has presented his own body as a living sacrifice on our behalf. 
for a weary and worn out congregation, a group who may have been doubting their own worthiness, these words were truly life-giving and life-affirming. Jesus Christ, and none other, represents us before the throne of grace. You can take that to the bank. When we return tomorrow, having given his hearers a word of encouragement, now he turns to warning them not to give up at this point. But for now, may God continue to bless you and keep you in all that you do this day and in all the days ahead.